That's my clapper. <laughs> now I just karate chop my arm. Well, don't do that, you doofus. Baby, you're, you're so mean. <laughs> I only speak the truth. <laughs> Action! What's up, YouTube Barinos? Mr. Cheap here. I have a shadow on my face. So we're just gonna go ahead and flip the switch. If anybody's ever seen it over the top, you'll get the reference. Uh, you're not in the center. You need to come over here. We have to frame it. Frame it. And so that we focus, let's make sure you're focused. What? I'm putting my hands behind you. Oh, my head's too big for that, so. We have to put aprons on. Because apparently black was not the right choice, regardless of what I said in my Instagram story. Just ignore that. Okay, the cookie, now that you can read this oh, from here. They don't know what we're doing. Oh! What are we doing? We are making... We shot an intro on Instagram, but if you didn't see that, here's what's happening. We're making decorated sugar cookies. Um, I used to have a cookie business, and I'm actually doing more... There's a more tutorial version. Well, the camera's over there. I don't know if they can hear me. The tutorial version... Let us know in the comments down <laughs> below if you can hear it or okay. <laughs> The tutorial version is over on Creative on the Cheap. It's more of a informational session. This is the reality of it <laughs> on this channel. So we're making decorated sugar cookies. Spence has said he, Spence's, <laughs> Spencer has, what are you yes. looking for? Glasses. Oh, what? Glasses? What? Oh, um, Spencer has said that he's going to try his hardest to make really pretty cookies. I don't know what that I do is means. Special. We've all seen his craft, so I I feel like he might do really well. But anyway, the sugar cookie recipe that I have always used, that I used when I sold cookies, is actually the Wilton, the company Wilton, um, sugar cookie recipe. It's the rollout cookie recipe. It's really easy to do. You don't have to refrigerate it. Um, yeah, so that's the recipe. I will link it down below, and as soon as... I don't know if I'm supposed to start. Yeah, get to work. Without Spence here, how you doing? Okay. Uh, all right. So you're gonna preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And um, for the cookie sheets, what I always do is I have a cookie sheet, and I always use parchment paper. I do not use the sill pads. Um, my reasoning for that, honestly, I really don't know. I, it, they turn out better on parchment paper. I don't, I don't know what the science is behind that, to be honest. It's just what I've always used. So, um, all right, well, are you gonna come help me? Yeah. I'm not a good staller. I'm not sure what he's doing, honestly. I never know what he's doing. Okay, uh, so what we're gonna do is we want to, step one, cream our butter and sugar. Now your butter needs to be room temperature. That is not room temperature. And this is not room temperature because I did not set it out. You actually, to get your butter room temperature, you never want to microwave it. If you want to know the trick on how to soften butter, um, you put it in the microwave and you literally do like three seconds, stop it, flip it, three seconds, you stop, just told them flip it. never microwave. I know, but because I just did it, I wanted to tell you, if you get an emergency, you can do it. So you lied to them. But the, you lied to them. But the, you lied to them. But the baking experts say um, you should never, to soften your butter, you should never like do it in the microwave it needs to like sit out you need to set this out about an hour or two before you actually want to make these cookies and i forgot <laughs> what if we was, did this because i was busy editing another video um yeah my spatula is stuck or my not my spatula my door is stuck when andy was little she would sit in her high chair and eat like all little things do I can't tell the story. I'm sorry. And when she was finished eating, she'd go down, 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 down. But then Bailey, I think it was Bailey. No. Oh, it was Sam. It was Sam. When he would get finished eating. Bailey loved eating and she never wanted to stop eating. He would sit in his high chair and try and get out. And when he couldn't get out, he'd go, I'm stuck. I'm going to have to get out of camera shot for a second. Can you entertain the troops? Entertain them. A couple of interesting factoids from this week. Um, Our bathroom's still not finished. What's the lady's name? 
I can't talk with you making noise. Oh, sorry. Here, I'll try to smush first. Our bathroom still isn't finished. <laughs> uh, Renee Sorensen. Apparently, I did not sign your Christmas card because Courtney didn't give it to me. What? She's trying to cover up the truth with the noise in the background. We're going to fast forward through this part until she's finished and I can talk again. Now you just fast forward it through. You have to fast forward through that. Okay. When you edit this. Don't show the ladies. I'm not. Okay. I did. That's really what they wanted to see. <laughs> Renee, I am sorry that Courtney did not give me the Christmas what? card signed. But you have a Christmas card just for you, just from me coming to you. And I don't know what he wrote in there, so I'm really sorry for whatever he said because I didn't read it. But he did write you a message. She sealed it up before she read the card. I didn't, I didn't read I it. I watched the whole time and realized she wasn't going to read it first. So she'll probably find out. She'll probably find out when you post a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah, please do that because I need to check it. I'm not really sure why I'm cleaning the beaters off to get this. I'm not either. I'm gonna throw this in the perfectly empty and clean sink that's always like Okay, this. so it takes almond and vanilla ac extract. All right, my next little tip and oh, trick. Oh wait, stand by. I need to go I'm mix Talking this. to the people. I need to go mix this first. I have only peeled half of the foil back on the lid because it's a round lid. And this way, when you put your measuring teaspoon in, my believe it or not, I am an expert cook. My you can now drag that across the flat piece and you get a perfectly yeah. level teaspoon of baking powder or whatever else it is even though it comes out of a round can Mom without having to use a knife. Okay, I have baking soda already. Congratulations. Or baking okay. powder, not okay. baking okay. soda. Okay, so dump it in there. How much? Two teaspoons. One. This is your leavener. Um. Smells really good. Tell us in the comments down below if you can smell it. That's stupid. Maybe you should eat another happy hippo. Some of y'all may have missed the happy hippo incident. Of if you don't night. follow me on Instagram, you get to see all kinds of fun stuff. Like what Spence I did. Spence ate a happy hippo last night. Okay. I didn't know what a happy hippo was. Someone started yelling at me from across the room. Do you want a Reese's Christmas tree or a happy hippo? Come on, people. Obvious choice. Everybody wants a hippopotamus for Christmas. Also, you can use a spatula like a knife and you can cut this and just make slicing motions through it. And what this does is it sharpens the taste of the cookies because when you cut it into thin, sharp pieces, it's like a knife. I wasn't ready for that. Start over. So we didn't end up using the measuring cup. Why is that good? There's one less dirty thing in here. There's nothing dirty in here ever. Pretty sure what Courtney did is she waited until the part where it's not actually going to mix up well because she didn't do something right, and then she's having me do it so that she can blame it on me oh after gosh. this. I gotta see how this shindig goes. I just wanted to eat off this spatula. Okay. Shush. This is painting me to watch. Shush. Oh, it's not painting you to eat the cookies. Don't. You be quiet. You've wasted space. You've wasted space. So the first thing you want to do when you're doing this correctly, figure out which ones fit inside of the others. Do what I say, little man. You see how she treats me? If you get them a little brown, it's okay because you're going to cover them up with icing. But if you see much brown well, on them, they're going to be crispy. See how this one's thinner? That's why. But the rest of them, those are perfect. Perfecto. That one went on a diet it, before it, it was off, cut. Or you just closed the screen? No, I was looking at it back here. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Did you smash his head? No. You took it out? Looks like you did. 
He has an injury. Yeah. We'll put an icing band-aid on. Yeah, that's one you can decorate. Maybe. It's your special cookie. Yeah. If you get stuff on the edge of the bowl like this, the easiest thing to do is just wipe it off with your finger and then lick your finger. It's a tip and trick from Mr. Why are you laughing? I'm not. Why do you always ask me if I'm laughing? Because I'm not. Is that my egg or yours? That's yours. Okay. You have to, open, yeah, get the plastic there. Good job. Unlike Mrs. Cheap, who got green stuff all over her fingers, I'm gonna be neat and tidy about mm -hmm. this and not stain myself. Mm -hmm. Also, if you would like us to send you some cookies. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't open that up. I need to recuperate from the last mail out I did. Oops, I got some on my finger. Don't wipe it on the thing. Why not? Because then other cookies... Because this is very nice parchment paper yes. and we don't want to ruin it. Yes. It's my fine china parchment. So we'll just leave it like that? You can add a little more if you want. Just add a little more. It's not going to hurt it. But is it going to make the red icing taste even redder no. and worse? No. This is flavorless. It doesn't... But red icing always tastes bad. I'm not saying it tastes it like taste something. Bad. I need a bag. They're right there. Oh. I knew that. I was checking to see if you were paying attention. Mm -hmm. You want to put it on like an elf hat for your hand. Mm -hmm. And then my hand is very large. It's or I should tight. say fat. So you don't want to shove that too far into the glass. Mm -hmm. And then you want to pull this over. Mm -hmm. You want to take this mm -hmm. and bring it back. And let all of this settle down. It's like when you have the ketchup or the mustard, you want to shake it, get it all down to the bottom so that you can get that last little bit out. Mm -hmm. And then when you get it all the way down to the bottom like that, mm -hmm. and you squeeze it down. You got an air pocket down at the bottom, I can see it. Just checking to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> And then you want to squeeze it down, and then once you squeeze it down, you want to make a carrot. Mm -hmm. It's an icing carrot. And then you take, is this the male or the female symbol? I'm not sure which one. So you take your little purple symbol thing, mm -hmm. and I have no idea how you wrapped it around, but it wraps around here somehow. And then like clips back onto itself. We have now made a red carrot. And so you take your red carrot and you plant it on the table over here next to the green carrot, which has a big air pocket at the end of the tip because Courtney did a bad job versus mine where it comes all the way down to the end. Uh -huh. Mine is much better looking if you want to compare the two. See, giant air pocket, no giant air pocket. Not very firm. Oh, look, there's a whole nother air pocket in there and it's very just crumply and whatever. Nice and firm, good looking carrot. Comment down below if you think I'm better at putting stuff in piping bags. Okay, get out of my chair. All right, everybody. Mr. Cheap. Why are you laughing already? I'm I didn't not. even say anything except Mr. Megan Cheap. Megan sent me thank you. I'm not even paying attention to you. She's on the naughty list. You can't talk to no, her. No, she got off the naughty list. She earned herself off the naughty list. Did she go back and change her vote? No, she helped me with my thumbnail today. So she's off the naughty list. All right. Blue Guns and Roses is no longer on the naughty list. Just so you guys know, I may not have Courtney's technique with everything, but I have way better ideas. She gets most of her crafting project ideas from me. I have a book that I carry around with me and write down ideas all day, and she steals it when I'm sleeping at night and writes stuff down. So to start with, we're gonna do a candy cane. And like Courtney said, we wanna do our outline without touching the cookie and it's okay if yours is a little uneven and doesn't actually follow the edge of the cookie on this there's a reason for that and I'll show you in a minute this is a very advanced technique that I'm doing and it's not something that I just saw Courtney do 
five minutes ago that I figured I could do better than her at. Then we need our prison shank tool. Oops, there was icing over there. Just lick it off, remember, when you get something on your hand, you just lick it off, like that. And since it's red, it doesn't want, don't want to come all the way off, but once you lick it, you're good. And I'm not fixing my edges because I didn't do anything wrong. I'm improving upon them. Okay, is this white flood or is this white outline? Or outline. Outline's on the left, flooding's on the right. Normally a flood is a bad thing. Gets into people's houses and ruins stuff. But in this case, it's apparently what we want. Now, as you can tell, Courtney did not make good carrots like I did. So this is a little more difficult to do. And if I had a good carrot, it would be a lot easier. But we're gonna do the best we can with what she has given us to work with. And we flood. And we flood. And she said people are scared of this. Um, I am not scared of hardly anything. My two probably actual fears in life are drowning and prison. When I say prison, I mean obviously I would never do anything to go to prison. But the reason that it bothers me so much is I couldn't handle people telling me what I had to do all day and where I had to be and where I had to stay and not being able to just walk out somewhere else if I wanted to. And I'm making sure that we got a good flood that goes all the way in and we don't leave any little air bubbles because she said air bubbles are bad. Um, I have never done this before. This is literally the first cookie I have ever decorated like this. So I've done sugar cookies like where you just take normal icing and you put it on it and then like you pour sprinkles on it, but never the king and queen icing. Baby, did you ever Google why they call it royal icing? I did not. Maybe you should do that. Okay, I will do that right now. Maybe it's because it's a royal pain in the you know what. <laughs> Alright, now let's see if my idea works. No, we're going to have to do red over the top of it. So we need a little more of our red, but not very much. All right, now let's see if my idea works. Okay, and the answer to the question, why is it called called? <laughs> Why is it called royal icing? The earliest reference to royal icing dates back to the 1600s. It was known as egg white icing, a well-beaten mixture of egg white plus icing sugar, which is powdered sugar. It gained the accolade, did I say that right? Royal. Accolade. Accolade. Royal when it was used to coat and decorate Queen Victoria's wedding cake in 1840. So in 1840, it changed from egg white icing to royal icing. You're welcome. We're not just about entertaining here, folks. We're about learning. We're a learning family. What I could use is like a paper towel or a towel to wipe this thing off on. No, you don't have one. Here, I was just using this towel. You were using your shirt. No, I wasn't. I was which using... is my shirt. I was using a towel. This is your shirt, correct. But I wasn't wiping it on your shirt. I was wiping it on a towel. There are two categories of <laughs> shirts in this house when it comes to t-shirts in particular. Mm -hmm. There are Courtney's t-shirts, and then there are our t-shirts, which means that they were my t-shirt, but Courtney likes soft t-shirts, and so if she finds out that a t-shirt that I have is soft, 
it suddenly gets worn a lot by her. It's because my skin is sensitive. To the point where I just don't ever see it again. But it still goes back in my drawer. She doesn't take up any of her clothing storage space with my shirts that she wears. That would just be silly. I'm very impressed by your candy cane. I got too much sprinkles. I couldn't figure out how to get the right amount, so there's a little too much of the clear sprinkles. I have to say, I was not expecting that quality of work from you. Mm -hmm. Wait until you see what happens next. You can just go ahead and say that I make better cookies than Courtney now. Those balls are hard to eat though. These are not about eating. This is about oh. how good they look. Did you see this? Did you see my finished product? No, I'm coming. You can just go ahead and use my cookies for your video. <laughs> Let's not be crazy now. Now. Some of y'all may have seen Courtney's Insta story last night when we were making cookies and she was trying to show a cookie that when I pulled it out of the oven she said I messed up and damaged the cookie but it was done on purpose um, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it and so this is a very advanced technique that would be a whole nother series of videos and hours and hours of practice on your part just to get right. So when making a gingerbread man, sometimes what you need to do is when you reach in and grab the pan, you put your thumb right into the head of the cookie as it's coming out. And it's going to give you this little, oh, where's the other broken off piece of it? Maybe someone ate it. Oh. And then a crack across here, okay? <laughs> These are what I like to call realistic cookies. So what you do is you take your cookie and instead of trying to fix the cookie or just throwing it away or eating it or whatever you were going to do, you use your icing to tell a story with the cookie. And so obviously this was a severe injury for this gingerbread man. We're going to need to fill this story out a little bit more and give it some detail so that everyone can understand exactly what happened. And so to start with, we need to outline our gingerbread man. Another bad carrot from Courtney. She's really bad at these carrot what? things. I gotta go through Move and twist this up so again. The There's green Whoa. on the end of it, which is in the way of stuff. Now, when you do this, you wanna leave most of the part up at the top out. I have not figured out speed yet on this. I'm trying to move at the same speed that the stuff is coming out. I think I need to squeeze a little lighter and move a little slower, but that worked out okay. All right, so we've got an outline. We'll do a little outline up here so that stuff stays in. Okay, the gingerbread man needs a little bit of hair. Man, is this like liquid? Oh, maybe this is flood, I don't know. One eye, just one. And we'll give him some pants. Oh, whoa. Why does he have an eye on top of his That's head? That's his hair, but the oh. brown didn't work very well in it. It was like all liquidy and runny. Well, that's because you blooded on flooding. It's supposed to be. You don't have any brown outline? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, I didn't know there was another one. Well, it's still kind of wet. If you put this on there, it'll still kind of absorb. So you actually need to let it dry if you want to do like details. 
Like the... No, I know what I'm doing. There's a reason for all oh. of this. It kind of looks like a shark. Like, here's his eye, and here's the shark, and that's here, his fin Let me try this here. anyway. It looks like a shark looking to the side wearing pants. <laughs> you can't even tell it's a gingerbread man. It looks like a deformed bear. Oh. Oh, no, no. What? What is that? That's his mouth. Oh. Okay. Okay, now. Why didn't you use red for his mouth? This gingerbread man <laughs> got hit in the head with a piano that fell out of a third floor window. Oh, so specific. Right. And so it's bleeding a little bit mm -hmm. over here. Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of runs out onto the Babe. pavement next to him. <laughs> no one's gonna be able to be able to decorate because you're making the workspace all nasty. Right. But we gotta tell the story. Oh. And then it's such a bad injury that in that area right there. Oh no, gosh. His brains Babe. are coming out the side of his head over there. Oh boy. And he obviously lost an eye, but we don't have. Do we I have just, anything eye sized? Yeah, oh, here's his eye. balls you just use. Give him a white, give him a gold eye. No, his eye's brown, so. Oh, I think there's black balls in this. His eye yeah. is just over here. There's red here. and green balls. It just kind of red. fell off on the side. Give him a red eye. No, that would just mean that the camera was out of focus. So his other eye's what? just over there on the side of his head. Very nice. And that's what happens when you have a happy accident with your gingerbread man. I don't know if you want to use that in the video or not. <laughs> I'm very proud of my tree though. Your tree looks very nice, I have to say. I'm pretty impressed, except for that little whatever that is right there, but we can work on it next time. That is all for now. Maybe I will do more later. Good job. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed a little behind the scenes of the cookie making process. See you in the next one. Bye.